presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We have Basil Chapman on today. We have Tim Ord. A lot of stuff going on in the market, some stuff to look forward to, some stuff to keep in mind. I'm um, looking at Duke Energy right now. No big comments on it. I was just curious to see what was happening. Obviously, uh, you have some slight volatility in natural gas, um, probably not enough for them to go ahead and push through another uh, rate hike like they did a few months ago, uh, considering I, I pulled this back in the five year, right? It's basically Duke Energy has a pretty solid... Um, you know, kind of, they're not necessarily a monopoly, but um, they're pretty dominant, at least in my area, obviously in some other counties around the country. Uh, you have this kind of moment, sorry, this is the Duke Energy here. You pulled the natural gas contract. Something that really struck me as crazy is they sent me a letter a few months ago saying due to the volatility in natural gas, um, they have to increase their, their rates, right? I mean, the volatility they're talking about occurred at this time, right? So you had it for, you know, few months here and right back down, uh, back to kind of lower historic levels. Obviously we're at 290 right now, you know, you have a low of 144 off that. Um, but I always keep track of how natural gas moves, especially if it's volatile, to see what Duke Energy does. We were taking a look at Duke Energy in August um, of this, excuse me, in April of this year, and it's done kind of well since then, right? So take a look at April, I mean, if I'm being fair to myself or, or giving myself a little too much credit on it, you know, looking at that lower $92 area, we moved up quite a bit to 116. I'd definitely say if you live in this area, um, you know how expensive energy bills uh, can be. I live like a caveman in the sense that I never really have lights on. I have small lamps and I still pay an inordinate amount of money every month. So get in, get yourself some Duke Energy and kind of offset those costs a little bit. Uh, some stuff going on in the world today that can kind of impact us. Obviously, you have uh, the strike's going on at the ports, so that's something to keep in mind. If this goes on for a long period of time, we could obviously see uh, maybe inflation kick up uh, for the months uh, that that covered. Um, of course, you had the Israeli incursion into small areas of Lebanon in order to attack Hezbollah. Iran uh, met back with a few hundred rockets since some of them were caught by the Iron Dome, but a few of them hit as well. And then apparently there's going to be uh, heavy um I guess, air maneuvers from Israel uh, later in the evening. Now, this is all stuff to keep in mind, obviously, when you get really shaky international tensions. And I think a lot of people actually didn't price this in in a strange way, right? I think that's why you're seeing crude oil up about 3% right now uh, when it's been down uh, for the past few days. Obviously, we were in the low 68s yesterday. I think a lot of people had priced out any kind of in increase in action. Um, Certainly, the new president of Iran is a lot more moderate uh, than the guy prior who uh, passed away uh, a few months ago. Uh, but, I, but I think this ramps up the tension, kind of, especially in the mind of people uh, outside of the area. So you get natural gas, excuse me, you get crude oil coming up about 3%, trading at 70.16. You have gold moving a little bit, some of the other metals as well, uh, along with silver up about 0.67%. Uh, depending on what happens this evening and if there's any further retaliation from Lebanon um, or a particular Iran, uh, you can definitely see some pretty intense volatility, I would say, in crude oil and maybe some upward movement uh, in gold and silver as well. You have the composite off about 1.18%, Dow Jones Industrial about sideways off about 0.16%. The dollar is up a little bit, trading in the higher range uh, that it has been over the past few weeks, trading at 101.18 um, currently. Some stuff with Powell coming out saying, okay, well, listen, you had some numbers that the job openings were okay, um, up at 8 million from 7.7 .7 million the month prior. This is from August uh, and then back in July as well. And then you have 
Powell essentially saying like we're going to decrease rates, but it's going to be steady, and you know we'll see as uh, as some of the more um, pertinent numbers kind of come out. So the dollar kind of comes up a little bit on this, obviously with conflict as well. You can kind of see that uh, too. Let's see here. Yeah, the Dow futures off about 0.19. See if anything else is interesting. We got the spy trading uh, at 570.03 off about 0.65, and then still dynamics. I was going to take a look. Yeah, wow, look at that stuff right there. This is kind of what I was hoping for in this stock as well. I think we probably will establish a new range to see if we can pull back from this 130 level. This is a pretty big area of support here, or resistance rather. Uh, so I could see probably some bouncing off that 130 level in between 120 and 130, but that's pretty good volume uh, to the upside as well. And of course, some of the easing rates uh, are positive uh, for steel. Uh, we have Nike about to be reporting after the bell here. And this stock has had some issues. Switched over leadership. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can see here, right? So big gap down, we spoke about this when it happened. You have a movement back up, trying to test this level. We'll see if it happens, but no volume kind of coming back down. The analysts are not expecting good results. And I, I don't think anyone uh, wasn't clear about that, uh, but this is gonna be how, how bad are they, right? So let's take a look a little bit. Um, Analysts are expecting from the world's largest sneaker company for its fiscal first quarter 2025, according to the consensus estimates from LSEG. The earnings per share are 52 cents. The revenue they're looking for is 11.65 billion. Analysts are expecting sales to drop 10% from the year ago period and profits to plunge by nearly 45%. Over the last year, it's been accused of falling behind on innovation, ceding share to competitors as it focused on selling directly to consumers through its own website and stores rather than wholesalers such as Foot Locker and DSW. I kind of understand what they were trying to do with that, getting on this more kind of hype beast train in a way, right? We're gonna do these rare drops. You can only get them on Nike um, or some of these weird other kind of retailers that are not the big ones like Foot Locker, uh, but obviously they had some issues. You know, China comprises, but think about 15% of their revenue and China has having issues. We spoke about the changing tastes of some of the consumers in China, especially the younger ones. Um, and then additionally, you're just having economic issues in China and the government is trying to uh, stimulate that economy. Uh, under Donahoe's leadership, obviously Donahoe was stepping down. He's replaced by Elliot Hill. Uh, that's gonna happen October 14th. Under Donahoe's leadership, the company grew annual sales by more than 31%, but it got there by churning out legacy franchises such as Air Force One, Dunks, and Air Jordans. Obviously, that's not great. You, as this article is saying as well, right, they're not necessarily innovating in any capacity. I think it's hard, too, with with Nike, right? It's not as easy as I think it used to be, where you found some kind of athlete that you liked and you stuck them in the shoe and it drove sales. Obviously, that worked with uh, Under Armour, um, with uh, Steph Curry, uh, but, but I think, you know, for instance, you dump a lot of money into um, advertisement during the Olympics and having these Olympians wear the stuff, it didn't really drive anything. I, I think a lot of the sneakerheads, quote unquote, today like some of the, um, you know, unique options. I know um, Wilson, the tennis company, released some shoes and they're doing well uh, too. So we'll see how Nike kind of fares today. Uh, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Basil Chapman. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. 
This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Take a look over on the screen here. I'm on the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. All you need to do is go to TFNN.com. Go right there to Newsletters tab. Come down here to that second row. You're going to see the opening call newsletter by Basil. Now, one of, again, as I said yesterday, I get access to all these newsletters. It's one of the great perks of working for TFNN. One of the things that I really enjoy about the opening call newsletter is one, the daily updates are concise. You know exactly what you need to be looking for and what some potential actions uh, kind of hinge on. But then also the Friday overview. So on Fridays, Basil releases these, kind of goes over everything of the week for the upcoming week as well. And it really just gets you situated and gets your head in the game. Uh, of course, you can access those whenever. Additionally, one of the massive perks of the opening call newsletter is you get access to these subscriber webinars that Basil does, okay? So the most recent one was July 23rd. It's sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. He went over, well, sector rotations, see new groups rally. Can the out of favor big losers become winners? These are all fantastic. And of course, you can go through uh, all the ones that he has done. Those are available as well. If this is your first time subscribing, not to worry. There is a 30-day money-back guarantee in case for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you. But I'm betting that it will. Basil, how are you doing? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, nice show today and everything. Uh, what are we looking at? So there are a couple of things I wanted to go through. So let me just start off right away. We're looking at a chart of the Dow. On the left is the daily. On, in the middle is the weekly chart. On the right is the monthly. The core of the, the basis of the Chapman Wave methodology started a long time ago when I used to hand chart an engineering paper and a pencil and ruler to find the lowest low and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them. Each peak gets a, a higher letter sequentially an uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But the idea is to get you from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, which says that you should go to at least four higher peaks. So first is peak A, second peak one penny above A stars, leg B, that goes to uh, leg, uh, peak B, one penny above B stars, leg C, that becomes a peak C, etc. until we get to D. D is the fourth highest peak. The objective in the Chapman Wave methodology is to try to get you from a starting signal to at least that D, and then other things can happen. It can go E, F, and G, but in the meantime, the most important thing is what happens at D. So we um, are looking at this chart here on the, daily, the, on the daily, and it has this little D. There's a particular technique that I have which said, yep, it could go higher. And now we've gotten to the, the 
six highest peak, which is F. So I don't want to make it difficult. I'm just saying at 42,628, I was anticipating that come early October, based on this weekly chart, based on the time sequence and the chart pattern with another technique that I use, which is this inside track. You see this thin green line and, and pink making a, a little mini channel. Look how it's held back the price every time it's gotten there, except last week it snuck above and now it's gone back in. So, And the monthly chart went to a D and within two bars it made a new higher high. So this is a leg E in uh, in September. So, so far, those are the, just the basic of the Chapman methodology. But look at this. I use this nine-period moving average. I'm going to go to this chart right here, which shows it in greater detail. So the gray line is whatever price I'm following. Uh, the nine and 14-period moving average is right here, where green is when the price is above the 14, and that's very positive. Pink is when it's not. And look, th at this particular point, the Dow is still with a very strong 914 with the green way above the 14 and the price is way above the 9. And I can go through all the different indexes and you'll see at this particular stage, that's where they are. So what I did last week is we started um, a, just a, a very a small one-to-one -one short position in the S&P, more as insurance, but saying that there's a chance that based on everything I'm looking at, this first week of uh October should be shaky, and we want to be prepared for it. So what we've done is for all our long positions, um, all the positions have been making money, so we've taken a little bits off, uh, 15, 20, 30 percent or more gain, and we've lightened up because we, we feel we'll, be having, we'll have another opportunity to add to these positions on a pullback. So that's the status that we're at right now. And as I said, D is where other things can happen, and here we are in leg D, I have to wait the full week. If it doesn't go, the Dow doesn't go above 42,628, that becomes a peak D. And unless, and this is the really, this is what we're watching. So today, earlier on, of course, we had that sharp sell off, but we didn't take out yesterday's low. And we are still macro uh, things that we're looking at in the economy, et cetera, a strike coming up, but just a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I think this is a little shaky, this period. So the 9 is still above the 14, and I'm anticipating that if the Dow goes below 41,850, closes below 41,850, that'll start this uh, consolidation phase. So within that, there's still sectors that are working. For instance, we have the AI. This is the Global X Artificial Intelligence ETF. Uh, it's, we, we, we've got down just about 30, and here it is at 36.84. We've had it quite, quite a while. And it's got a little pattern here that says, there should be one little pop to the upside to get to a D uh, that was that was made on the 26th of uh, September at 37.52. So 37.53 will start that. And this little pattern where it goes to a C, and I anticipate the D is one of the stocks that we had. The uranium. Uh, this is called the Uranium Energy Corporation, where it may. We, we were long some time ago and really had really good profits. And then as it was coming down, we got out. But we made this, we got back in just recently and we got this peak C. So I'm anticipating UEC should, it's trading at 650 right now. We were anticipated that that, that peak C will see a higher high to go to the D because that's the requisite of the buy signal going to a buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology. And today we went to that D, so we took a little bit off because that's part of money management. So this is going to be also important because. I've been talking for some time about Bitcoin and saying Bitcoin back in uh, back in March gave a sell signal, and it's been in this. This is the downside. That same channel that we were looking at that I call the inside track. In this case, repellent zone. Look how the, uh, Bitcoin is being repelled. But why I said is uh, Robin Hood, H O O D, which is the stock, um, the the. Participants in Robin Hood really fluctuate. They go between gold and they go between mm. Bitcoin. So it's on its it's in its own trajectory. So we've been long from just about off the bottom that was made at 1398 back on August the 5th. We got in um, in the 16s, and I said today that we we're going to take a little bit off because it's already in the 24. So today we took a little bit off in the 23s for a very nice gain, and you can see it's looking a little double choppy there, but. Um, Gold has done extremely. We have a gold stock. It's done well. But gold's done very well. And 
this this I think is with the participants that are active in Robinhood. So even though Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin in, in another few weeks, maybe another month or so, I think it might start to get back on the upside, but it's just making lower highs and lower lows. Gold, of course, is the one. So we've been using this as kind of a proxy in a certain sense. Now, what's interesting, you were just talking about STLD, which yes. is um, right here. This is Steel Dynamics. And this is the steel stocks are starting to come on very nicely. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you look at the SLX, which is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF, doing very well. I just thought I'd introduce that because I'll talk about it more in my show tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the Tiger Technicians Hour. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. Thank you very much. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Moore. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, hey, Tim, taking you, the time uh, to, to educate today? the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, um, and more. Opening oh. call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. We're just joined by Basil Chapman. That's the author of The Opening Call and the host of the Tiger Technician's Hour. Now, we're going to move over now to one of my other favorite guests that we have on the Tom O'Brien Show. 
and that is going to be Tim Ord. Now, if you want to see what Tim Ord has to offer, you can go to the Ord-Oracle.com. Again, that is Ord-Oracle.com. He comes on every Tuesday and Thursday. You can see the archives of our interviews with him up on our YouTube channel, Tiger Financial News Network. Make sure to give that video a like and a subscribe. If you go over to TFNN.com, you can click the services tab at the top here, and we have two fantastic webinars uh, that were hosted by Tim Ord. This is the secret science of market tops. That is how to identify market tops, and then the six secret ratios every trader should know. They are fantastic, and I strongly recommend checking those out. We are joined now by Tim Ord. Tim, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Um... So are we showing on your screen or are we showing yep. on my screen? No, I have I have the charts. All right. Okay. So let's uh should we dig into it? I think we should. I'm gonna pull up chart right. one right now. All right. This this is a seven indicator yep. and it's the uh the bottom window is the uh, ten day average of the uh equity put call ratio readings and the next higher window is the five day average. And I, I drew uh, dotted lines there, are showing when those two time frames, the five and ten day, get into bearish territory. Normally, at at least you're at a uh, stalls the rally, if not produces a, uh, a decline. So seven is not right right now for the market to continue higher. And so you got to remember, you know, basically. 30 days, not quite, but a little over 30 days away is the election. So the market, a lot of times, is going to get kind of wonky in this time frame. So you're going to see some up days and down days. But the market's not going to move any direction, either extremely down or extremely up, until the election's decided. And from there, uh, the market will, uh, will start moving. But to, over the next four weeks, we're probably going to have a uh, kind of a dead market. And we'll show you reasons why as we go forward here. But anyhow, the upside is limited because the equity put call ratio readings on the five and 10 day are, are pretty much in levels that suggest the market had, will have a hard time going higher here. So upside is limited. Let's go to chart two. Perfect. We have it up. Okay. Yeah, this is another chart that kind of says the same thing. Uh, this chart goes back to, uh, looks like about mid 2017. And I marked the times uh, shaded in pink, that where the, uh, the this window, uh, well, anyhow, the SPX, this is a weekly chart, made higher highs and the ratio made lower highs. And uh, the, the, the light blue areas are timed when the, both markets made, or the SPX made higher highs and the uh, uh, SPX mix ratio made higher highs. That's a bullish divergence. Well, we have a uh, bearish divergence right now. Since July, the market actually has made higher highs, and this ratio has made lower highs. This kind of goes along with the seminar indicator. So upside is limited here. We're most likely we'll get some sort of a pullback, but I don't think the pullback is going to be anything significant. Uh, market does not like uncertainty. It goes in, uh, so that's the reason why the market could see uh, over the next three, four weeks. You know, it could get pretty jittery both directions. Uh, so, but anyhow, yeah, upside is limited. Uh, according to seven indicators and according to this uh, SPX fix ratio. So let's take another look at, uh, keep going Perfect. further here to chart number three. Yep. And here's the reason why I think downside is limited. Uh, upside, I think after the market sees who's going to be the winner is, it's going to take off to the upside. And this is one of the ch charts that suggests kind of the same thing. And I marked the times in, uh, the green area, uh, the green stripes you see along this chart, this chart goes back to 2007. So it takes a big chunk of time. And, uh, and, and you know, the top window is the NYSC summation index. And usually you get above 1,000. It's over 1,000 right now. It's about 1,112. You know, actually, be exact, about 1,113. And normally, uh, it's kind of hard to explain how to stay with, stay with me here, but no. normally uh, to get a, a immediate term bottom, you want the summation index to hit below minus 700. That's kind of a selling climax. And right after that, you need a buying climax to determine that that was a major bottom. And to get a, a buying climax, that ratio or the NY, uh, NYSE summation index needs to go to plus 1,000. 
And throughout this chart, I did uh, outline those with uh, blue lines and red lines. The green lines or the green shaded areas are times when you didn't have a selling climax. The summation just went up to uh, plus 1,000. So that's a sign of strength without a selling climax. And they usually appear uh, a lot of times in mid, uh, mid rallies, mid, mid major rallies. In 2010, it kind of went sideways for a little bit before it went on to new highs. But all the other times, it pretty much didn't really decline much. And the market really kind of just, it, it shows a sign of strength is present right now because its summation index is plus 1,000 right now, even though we're going to election time, there's a lot of uncertainty. The outcome will be new highs according to the summation index. Uh, does that make clear to oh, you? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Definitely. All right. So there could be some minor pullbacks here, but there's it's more or less this market's going to trade sideways. Uh, I mean, can it retrace 3 4 5%? Maybe. But 10% is probably out of the question. Uh, you know, maybe not even. You know, I'm, I'm thinking probably 3 Three percent. You know, there's there's a gap down below us around five sixty, maybe there. At worst case, we may get to five forty. Uh, this is on the SPYs, but that's it. Uh, it's just, it's it's going to flip sideways. You're going to have some up days, down days, and this is going to continue for the next uh, uh, months until until you get right around the election time. The market most likely will start going up before the announcement of the president. The market will know who the president will be before it actually is announced. And uh, so don't wait for November 5th to, to get in the market. Chances right. are this market's already gone. But end of October is probably, I'll be looking for a signal. And the same signals will, will come as usual. You'll have panic and you know everybody will be panicking the market and we'll be stepping in buying it. So, but. The next three weeks is going to be, you know, I'm probably not going to participate much in the market here because it's 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 be too many whipsaws. So right. I know uh, the time is about ended here. So yeah, we'll flip no, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, and folks, if you have any questions um, or need any clarification, just ask me in the YouTube or on Discord. Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I'm joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we're just looking over uh, some charts before we went to the break. Tim, we did have a question for you, and um, if it's better answered on Thursday, uh, no problem at all, but I wanted to get it out there. It's one of our uh, listeners, Kate, she was saying that you showed this wag breath indicator a few weeks ago, which su suggested a continuation of the bull market. She was curious if this could lead to an eventual parabolic move months out like we saw in 2000. And I'm not familiar with that move in particular. Uh, she says, I'm trying to understand if he sees any parallels with other time frames based on his wag thrust indicator. She thinks that's about it. Well, actually, we're, we're, that's the next chart up. So, uh... There you we'll go, Kate. <laughs> yeah, go, Perfect. go to chart. So, oh anyhow, yeah, I was I was around. Yeah, the, the actually I wasn't really familiar with the uh, uh, Zwag breast thrust indicator back in 2000. I wasn't really using it at the time, but the market did pretty much went parabolic, but it went parabolic on on very few stocks. Uh, I had been looking at uh, charts uh, like the. Uh, comparing the, the acceleration we're having now compared to years past. And it almost looks like at some point we're heading into some poor, uh, parabolic move. I don't, you know, I don't think it's going to be this year or next year, but I think within the next five years, I think this whole process of this market going up this fast in this short period of time, I mean, we're, we're doing back-to-back 20% uh, uh, annual returns here. And that's pretty rare going back to, you know, 1930s and stuff. You know, normally the market, I think it was like 9.7% average per year, counting all the declines and whatever. And we're, ex we're way past that. So I don't think the, the Zwag breast stress indicator uh, is identifying that. It's just the, the acceleration of the up move in, in the market. It tells me that, yeah, we're probably in the midst of uh, a kind of a parabolic move in the market. Uh, there's just too much money out there. Right. Uh, at some point, the market's going to, or the Fed's going to, not the Fed, but our government is going to cut um, that money supply, which is a lot of fuel for the market. And once they do that, that's when uh, I think uh, the market could see something like 2000 all over again. I see. <laughs> but I don't know when they're going to do it. You know, politically, it's not um, a good idea to, to kill the market. So right. I don't but it is coming. That's uh, post-election behavior. Yeah. Yeah, but it ain't going to be this year. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it it, uh, it is it is coming, and and I'll be prepared for it because back in 2000, I really I actually did catch the 2000 top, but I didn't know what I was doing as much as I do now. Right. Uh, but but anyhow, the you know this is the uh, we're on chart. For right now, which is the Zwag breast stress indicator. My point of this chart, back on August 5th or August 19th, we did have another Zwag breast stress indicator suggesting that we're still in a pro in a bull move going up here. These Zwag breast stress indicators don't show up in a bear market. They only show up in a bull market. And so this is kind of reinforces the idea that we had one in in April this year, we had another one in August, and, and we got the summation above plus 1,000 right now. 
all those things suggest that this market had way further to go to the upside. But I'm just saying over the next month here, because we're going into an election, uh, the market may get a little wonky. Right. But if you're a long-term investor, you can stay long because downside is minimal. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me give me a drink here. Oh, yeah. No problem. No, and this is all great stuff to, to see as well, right? Kind of get the component on the shorter term and then what we can see on the kind of grander uh, scale as well. Right. Yeah. Every, everything is looks good. There's, there's going to be a minimum. There's not going to be a, my opinion, there's not worth the risk really short in the market here, even sure. though there's a lot of uh, people... And it may be, but yeah, you know, down upside is a lot better. There's a lot more upside than downside. I'll put it that way. Right. So anyhow, this this wag breast thrust indicator triggered back in August, and then we had another one in April. Uh, you know, that's pretty close together, suggesting this market is kind of accelerating to the upside, if anything. So anyhow, it looks good. Minor minor walkiness over the next several weeks, but other than that, up uh, new highs for the years out. Fantastic. We can get in the gold market a little bit. I think we should. A lot of movement in the gold market recently. Let me blow this down a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. It, it chart, uh, yeah, this is the uh, bullish percent index. This is chart uh, five. This is bullish percent index for gold miners index. If you notice, we're hanging right around 80 percentile. Yeah. That's what happens it, it, in bull markets. This thing, the bullish percent index, which is the... Uh, uh, it measures percent of stocks that are point figure bicycles in the gold miners index. So long as it stays above 60, the uptrend's in force. And usually in bull moves, it just stays up there. Uh, it, it fluctuates in general above 60, between 60 to 85. 80, you know, if it gets any higher than that. It gets above 95, that's too exuberant. You're probably going into a high. If everything's on a buy signal, you get very late in the rally, and that hasn't happened yet. And most of my indicators suggesting this rally is going to go for a while. Uh, so, but we're hanging strong. You know, most stocks are starting to perk up. Even the small ones now are starting to, to perform, and uh, that's going to get more, I guess, exuberant as time goes uh, forward. Because once the gold market starts really going, it actually speeds up, and it speeds up more towards the end than from the front. Right. Uh, so there will be a, a lot of stuff going on over the next year and maybe probably a couple, three years. It depends how the, it just gels out. But there's no sign of any top, of any consequence in the current position. We can, uh, I don't know if we get time to do all this, but we can go to the next chart. We can go to the next chart. If it goes over, obviously you can come back on for the uh, short segment at the end, without a doubt. All right. This uh, this chart is the uh, the bottom window seems to work the best, which is the 50 day average of the up down volume vast client indicators. And along this indicator stays above zero, which it has. In other words, major up volume compared to down volume. There's more up volume going into the market than down volume. Uh, the trends up. Uh, you can see some consolidations along the way, kind of makes higher high. GDX is making higher highs, higher lows. But the trend's up. You know, we're coming in as of today, almost 12, uh, it's plus 12.89 right now. That's up from 12.02 yesterday. Uh, so it's, it's hanging right around that plus 10, plus 15 area. Uh, no sign of a, uh, of a top there. And we can crunch this in chart number seven is the monthly chart. It's a long, uh, this chart, uh, the bottom window is the the monthly GDX up down volume, and I pulled a Bollinger Band on it. Mm -hmm. The next window up is the uh, GDX advanced decline on a monthly. As long as those two indicators stay above the mid Bollinger Band, which are way above it, the uptrend's intact. And so if you go back and look at most of these indicators or these monthly indicators, these charts uh, produce a minimum of a year and a half rally. So we're in the midst wow. of a, at least another year to go. And maybe more. Don't know. We'd have to wait and see. So, that is up. Yeah, so. no, that's fantastic. And we have seen some of the smaller guys moving. Obviously, VGZ was one that made some nice moves, at least in the gold miners. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. I really look forward to having you on, and I know all of our viewers do too. And we'll uh, see you Thursday. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care, Tim. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a very short segment.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We were just joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Now, if you missed that or want to go back over everything uh, Tim was going through, after the show today, you can go to Tiger Financial News Network on YouTube. We're going to have that uploaded for you. Make sure if you do view that to give it a like and give our channel a subscribe. It helps us out immensely. And again, if you want to see more stuff from Tim Ord, I cannot recommend enough going to the services tab on tfnn.com and checking out the secret science of market tops and six secret ratios every trader should know. Now, I'm looking at GSM. Actually, Dan in the Den uh, brought this up. It's kind of interesting, but I want to talk about it in the grander scale. Ferro Globe, what's interesting about them is October of last year, they bought a high uh, quality quartz mine. Now, we were speaking a little bit yesterday about uh, Hurricane uh, Helen, and it destroyed Basically, the largest mine that produced high qual excuse me, high purity quartz. You need this stuff to make the wafers that goes into legitimately everything we use tech-wise. The only other place that has a large amount of production, I guess, is in China. That presents its own issues, um, you know, especially from a national security perspective. Um, but just kind of in general, I didn't realize that this hurricane it dumped 24 inches of rain on spruce pine. Now, this is gonna be a massive issue, and if it takes too long to get these things out, now, it's, this is so strategic and important, I would assume it probably doesn't take too long. And it seems, I didn't I only was able to research it over the break, so do your due diligence on this, but that ferro globes in South Carolina didn't necessarily get smacked the way that spruce pine did. 
So this is interesting. You're seeing an increase of 5.5% today, trading at $4.89. If there's any long-term uh, kind of issues with spruce pine, um, you know, GSM, Ferroglobe might be in a really interesting spot going forward. Very interesting stuff. This is insane. Um, I don't think we're all aware of, I think, how much damage this thing caused, but keep your mind out. These kind of big events, you know, technicals are extremely important and they do work. We see that with, with Tim, Tom, and all of our, all of our traders here. Um, but these kind of things, too, the fundamentals impact everything as well. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. It was great coming on again with you all. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien in the morning market kickoff. Take care.